Mr. McCall referred to that not having read the Hamas Charter. If you are going to comment on this, you could at least do the people who desire to kill you the decency of trusting their word. And I can tell you that if the people who are, who are attempting... The, the people who are adump, uh, attempting to bomb London and Glasgow and are currently wreaking havoc in Baghdad and across the world, um, if they had their way, I can assure you, your own career wouldn't be going the way it is. You wouldn't be the woman you are. You wouldn't be allowed to do what you do in this country. That is the same, and that is the same for everyone in this group. And you should not be, and you should not take that for granted. And one other thing, I should just add to that, there's been a lot of cynicism in this room about this already tonight, but our troops in Iraq did not only go into Iraq for one reason. The people of Iraq had been living under a totalitarian dictatorship for decades, and many people thought that that was our fault. We get blamed when we intervene and when we don't. Right. It was the same in the Balkans. We get blamed when we All intervene right. and when we don't. Right. If you in a set of children's books about various uh, religions, couldn't depict Islam's prophet in their book, mm -hmm. and that no cartoonist wanted to do it. You want to talk about fear, you want to talk about racism, how about the, just being a, an illustrator in Denmark who, who feels their life's going to be on the line if they draw a picture for a kiddies book? You want to talk seriously about how it feels to be scared, you know, you know, and then they do a cartoon for their local paper, and that their lives are under threat, and, the, and their families are threatened, and they have to go into hiding? You want to talk about what it is to feel threatened? This is uh, the product of a fevered conspiracy mindset from the beginning. Uh, a mindset which is almost messianic in its uh, delusional belief that it can override every single norm of international law, every single norm of criminal law and of national law, and, um, and, and, and then find itself, and in Mr. Assange's case, in his place of last resort, praising, and I mean, it, it, it requires a heart of stone not to laugh at this moment, praising the Ecuadorian government for its stand on freedom of speech. I mean, Human Rights Watch found that in two weeks of this month alone, the Ecuadorian authorities shut down six radio stations and two television stations, which they didn't approve of. Ecuador is not a, uh, a mecca of freedom of speech. It isn't the world capital of decency. It's the last seedy bolt hole to which Mr. Assange thinks he can run. But it's come out today that uh, one of the main reasons Australia went to war in Iraq was for oil. No, that hasn't that hasn't come out today, sir. The war was not about oil. If it were, we wouldn't have spent all these billions of dollars in lives and blood and treasure. It was not done for oil. We okay. could have got oil by doing a deal with Saddam, like Mr. Chirac did. Okay. Let's move on. Well, there's oh, a war against Islam and a war against the Muslim world. No, hang on here a moment. The Danish cartoons would not have come to attention if there weren't a group of imams, two in particular, who decided to take offence and then take a world tour of taking but offense. Hang on, and then decided to take a world tour of taking offence and show cartoons they'd also made up that were far more offensive than any of the other ones around to other people in order to whip up such sentiment. Ayatollah Khomeini, I don't think, was a reader of Salman Rushdie's early work. I don't think uh, uh, that Ayatollah Khomeini ever sat down with his copy of the Satanic Verses, his advance proof, and then decided to take offence. This is a man willing to take offence. He wants to take offence. He wants to whip up other people who don't read books and within, can't read any a, long books. Who are you speaking to? Take different. Okay, well, yeah. sorry, Douglas, what are you saying? You, you were saying... No, I mean, I mean it, it just seems to me that, to an extent, uh, whether you believe this is the case or not, it's, uh, it's dangerous to an extent if you take advantage of the credulous and people's fears and real fears. And people have a real fear of well, what death. What did Steve instance, see in that? In that uh, well, in that... people have a real fear of death. And they always have done, they always will do. And there are always people who can provide explanations for what happens. If you tell people they're looked after, it makes them feel better than if you tell them they're alone. So people who believe in reason on these things are always at a disadvantage because we don't have soft fairy tales and we can't take advantage of the credulous and we can't claim that angels say rather banal things in our spare time. Not, not our army and our soldiers having to behave like lawyers, wondering if they're doing something which is uh, uh, going to get them up in a courtroom anytime soon. I don't really want to see this happening with the police. Somebody, uh, the lady in the back there, talked about the scene of the crime. This was not a crime committed by our policemen. These were people who were risking their own lives to protect people like you and me, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't think that we should spit on that and call it a crime or call them criminals. And if I can finally, if I can just finally say that there's an 
absolute lack of seriousness about this whole debate. Vince Cable said somebody's got to go. Anybody. Let's just get rid of a top-ranking police officer. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at a time of serious um, public uh, safety issues here, we face a real and determined enemy, which must be laughing tonight when they see politicians like Vince Cable for calling for just any re uh, resignation. No, any Would you be happy that one of the people who knows most in this country about your security and mine should just go on a political whim? I don't think so. Wow, 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 wow. Is he great or is Douglas Murray great? He's great. I wish we had someone like that in the United States of America. The closest person I can think think of is Thomas Sowell. He's an, uh, a black American economist, went to Cornell, has all the bona fides, everything that's there. The only problem is... He's conservative, and that problem is a problem with the progressives, with the left, with the Democrats, with the liberals. If he was on the left, he would be hailed. He would be talked about in all circles, on all the um, news networks, on all the alphabet networks. He, When he writes his books, he'd be called in to talk about his books all the time. He's written, I don't know, a ton of books. But the only time you ever get to see him are on some, you know, other video platforms that aren't really, really mainstream. And he would be the closest, you know, in terms of, he's 90 years old, folks. I mean, he's 90 years old. He's twice the age, I think, of Douglas Murray. But you guys have a phenomenal person there. And Douglas Murray just going after answering the questions and just putting it out there. Just putting it out there. I mean, really. It's amazing. Well, the first thing he was talking about, that lady in the first clip, who's a journalist of some kind, and he's basically telling her, you can do the things that you're doing because of the Western ideals of democracy, the Western ideals of freedom of speech, the Western ideals in which you do have women's rights. Try doing what you're doing. Remember the journalist that was filming? Um, I think she was there when the fall of Afghanistan. And she had to put on a scarf and cover her head. She was forced to do that. Because that's the way they have it in their country. Okay, that's fine. But she was forced. It wasn't by choice. She was forced to do that. And I'm sure if the Taliban had their choice, they probably would have wanted a man to be doing that instead of her. But it was in the early days or whatever, so they had enough problems as it is. But remember Baghdad Bob? Well, all right, you know, you had a Baghdad, you know, Afghanistan as well. And I'm just saying... These guys came out there and said, oh, we support all kinds of women's rights. No, they don't support women's rights. Come on. And that's what Douglas was telling us. And the crowd booed Douglas as if he was saying something that's just, you know, so way out there. I'm telling the truth. And that's the problem. Society is buckled under this crap as well. Political correctness, virtue signaling, polishing their halos. Or following the people that are polished halos because they because they've never been in that situation. They've never been under that type of uh, tyranny. And then about the cartoon drawings. Look, do you have the right to offend? Absolutely. Do you have the right to draw anything that you want? Absolutely. Again, it comes with, you know depending upon if you're drawing something that's telling you to commit violence or to commit an act of terror. It's the same thing with free speech. Basically, that's what's happening. But the, to allow freedom of expression to artists, to painters, to writers or whatever is something that's allowed under the First Amendment, at least in the United States. Now, the question of should you offend? Should you cross certain lines? That's a judgment issue. 
that's a moral issue. That's a personal issue. And then you have to live with the consequences of something like that. And then in the last thing, there's so much inside there with Douglas Murray, so many great things that he was talking about there. But the fact that somebody in the uh, a minister in the parliament says, you know what, we just need to sack a police officer just for doing that? That's the same thing that was going on here with the Black Lives Movement. You know, how do we like our how do we like our cops? You know, how do we like our cops? Pigs fried like bacon. I mean, those kind of tropes, those kind of songs that were there. Defund the police, get rid of the police. We need to put evaluators out there, psychologists, psychiatric, social workers. The they're they're better handled. They're they're able to handle the situation a whole lot better than a police officer in a domestic situation. Oh, sure. And when that goes sideways, then what's going to happen? Who's going to take the blame then? If these idiots and these morons and these social workers feel that they want to get into a situation which is going to get way out of control, because those guys are really going to be listening to a social worker, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, in that type of situation where you have nothing to defend yourself if something goes sideways. And the fact of the matter, it's easy to call for defund the police. It's easy to call it a sack or to get rid of somebody or to terminate their position because of whatever happened. Now, if somebody is committing a truly, there's a police officer, law enforcement personnel, anybody, it doesn't matter. But in this case, we're talking about law enforcement and they've done something wrong. Hey, adjudicate it. Get all the evidence. Bring all the facts. If you have enough, take it to court. If the person's done something that infringes upon any rights of anybody, if they've done something that breaks the law, throw the book at them. Absolutely. But do it within the purviews of the law. Do it the right way. Innocent until proven guilty. Not the other way around, because that's what it is right now. You're guilty, and you better prove your own innocence. And even if you prove your innocence, we're still going to say that you're guilty, because that's a narrative that they want, folks. That's the narrative. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your host, Dr. Nasser, where I give you my political prescription from my political perspective of what happens when all these things comes crashing together, especially when Douglas Murray comes crashing together with everything, social media, religion, culture, politics, government, they all come colliding. Take a look at all our videos. Our links are above and below. I'd love to have your comments. And I'll leave you with my final thought, which is, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.